Hey what's up guys in this video we're going to talk about what is git. So git is widely used version control system and it is created by Linus Torvald in the year 2005. So git actually facilitates tracking of code changes that means if we are working on a brick project and every change in that code base will be tracked by git. So the git will help us to track every changes to that project and also it can uniquely identify every contributor. So suppose we have multiple contributors and they are making changes to the project. So git will help us identify all of these individual contributors. And also git enable us collaboration in coding projects. So multiple developers can collaborate on the same project with the help of this git. So let's now talk about what does git do. So git actually used to manage project with repository. So it facilitates cloning of project for local work. So suppose we have one remote repository. So with the help of this git, we can clone that project into our local system. And then we can work on that project individually. And also git controls and tracks changes through staging and committing. So in git we have first of all, we have the staging area and then after that we have the committing area. So first of all a file goes through the staging and then we can use the command the file will be committed and also it allows us to branching and merging for concurrent work on different project part. We can create multiple branches of a project and then also we can merge those branches later on and also git enables us pulling the latest code project version to a local copy and also we can post local updates to the main project. That means we can use the command and we can pull the code from the remote copy and also we can post the code from the local copy into the remote repository. So the question is why we should use git. So git is exclusively used so over 70% of developers rely on it. Git enables remote collaboration so we can collaborate remotely on a project and we also have the full project history and we can also control the version. So all of these advantages make git a very good choice. So let's now talk about what is github. So github and git are distinct. So github actually world's largest source code host and it is owned by Microsoft. So if we wanted to host some code remotely then we can use github. So github actually used for hosting purpose where git is basically used for the version control which keeps track of all the history and changes that we made to the project. Hey what's up guys in this video we're gonna see how we can download and install git in our computer and also we're gonna see how we can configure the git and also we can initialize git on a folder. So first of all to download the git we have to go to the official site git-scm.com from here we can download the latest version of git. So once the download is completed then it is pretty easy to install the git. Now we have to check whether git is properly installed or not. For this we are gonna use the command git dash dash version. If it shows the version of the git properly that means git is installed properly in our computer. So now we have to configure the git. So we have to set the username and email. So for this we have to write the command git config dash dash global. So we are setting the name and email globally. So we have to write user dot name and inside the quotation we have to write the name of the user. Similarly to set the email we have to write git config dash dash global and then user dot email. And inside the quotation we have to write the mail of the user. So once you have done with the configuration let's just create one folder and initialize git on that folder. So here we are inside the VS code editor. Now let's just create one folder. So we have to write make directory. We're just gonna create one folder called git demo. So here we have the folder. So here you can see we have created this folder git demo. Now inside the folder you can see the folder is empty. Now to initialize this folder we have to use the command git init. So after applying this command you can see inside this git demo folder we have this hidden file. So this folder will be used by git to keep track of all the changes we made to our project. Hey what's up guys in this video we're gonna see how we can add files to our local directory and also we're gonna talk about different commands to add those files in the staging area and then also we're gonna see how we can commit those 
staged files and we're gonna save them into the local repository so let's get to that so here we have this empty project folder where we have initialized kit so let's now create one new file file a.txt and you can see we have this u marker after the file that indicates that this file is currently in untracked status that means this file is not tracked by git so let's now see the status of our folder so we can use the command git status so here it is showing currently we are on the master branch and we have one untracked file which is file a.txt so the untracked file means files that are in the working directory but not added to our repository that means git is not currently tracking all the changes that we made to our file a so for this we have to add this file in our staging area so currently our file is not tracked by the git so we have to add that file into the staging area so to add the file to the staging area we can either use the command git add and then specify the file name or if we have multiple files to add to the staging area in that case we can add them all in the staging area with the command git add and dash dash all so this command will add all the files in the staging area and also we can write git add dot so both of these commands will going to add all the untracked file into the staging area so we have to write git add and either we can specify the file name or we can add them all so we are gonna write git add dash dash all or even we can write git add dot so all the files will be added and you can see the marker is changed from u to a that means the file is added in the staging area so we can check the status so you can see currently we are on the master branch and the file is ready to be committed so that means we have successfully added the file in the staging area and now we're gonna commit that file to save that file into our local repository so let's now see how we can commit that so the commit is basically works as a save point that means uh, in our project whenever we find any kind of uh, bugs then we can go back to this save point so to commit we have to use the command git commit and then dash m and after that we have to add one message so the message is very important and it uh, should be clear so that we can see what had changed and when we have made the change so we should always add message to every commit so this file now in the staging area so let's just do the commit so we have to write git commit dash m so we have to add the message file a fast commit and here we have the message so we have successfully committed our file into the local repository and also we can directly commit our files into the local repository without going through the staging area and that is also possible suppose we are making so many small changes to our file in that case we do not want it to put all of them in the staging area so it makes sense to directly commit them in the local repository so we can also do that for this we have to use the command git commit dash a and then we can add the message so this way we can directly commit all of those changes hey what's up guys in this video we're gonna see how we can create one branch from the master branch and also we're gonna see how we can merge it back to the master branch so whenever we create one branch we are basically create a copy of the master branch and here inside the branch we can add new features we can do any experiments we can add new files and after all of this if the code works fine then we can always merge it back with the master branch and in this process the master branch will not get affected so suppose while adding these features so there can be some errors in the branch b so in that case the master branch will not be affected and at the end whenever we found that our code inside the branch is working fine our new feature is working properly then we can always merge it back with the master branch so let's now see how we can create one new branch so currently we are inside the master branch and in the master branch we have the file a.txt so let's now create one branch from this master branch so for this we can use the command git branch and then the name of the new branch like branch b and now if we check with the command git branch 
So here it shows currently we have two branches. We have the master branch and the branch B. So master branch is currently our working branch. So let's now switch to the branch B. For this we have to use the command git checkout and then the name of the branch like branch B. So you can see we are now switched to the branch B. And because branch B is a copy of the master branch. So inside the branch B we are also have this file a.txt. So let's now add one new file to the branch B. So we're gonna add b.txt and you can see because the file is a new file this is currently in untracked status. So you can see b.txt file is untracked. So we have to add it to the staging area. So we are gonna write git add dot b.txt is added to the staging area. Now we have to commit this. So we're gonna write git commit dash m so message will be b.txt added. So we have successfully added this file into the branch b. So initially the master branch has the file a.txt and then we have created this branch b. So the branch b also have the copy of the file a and then we have added one new file which is b.txt. So this b.txt only exists in the branch b. So let's now see how we can merge this branch b back with the master branch. So once we merge them together, b.txt also going to be part of the master branch. So currently we are on the branch b. So first of all let's just switch to the master branch. So we are gonna write git checkout master. So you can see we are switched to the master branch and inside the master branch we have only the file a. So let's now merge the master branch with the branch b. So for this we are gonna use the command git merge branch b. So you can see we have merged the master branch with the branch b. And currently we are on the master branch but still we can see that b.txt file which was part of the branch b. So because we have merged them together that's why this b.txt is now part of the master branch. So currently we are on the master branch. Let's now see how we can create one emergency branch. That means we can create one branch and then we can immediately switch to that branch. So currently we are on the master branch. So let's now use the command git checkout dash b and then the name of the new branch branch c. So you can see we have created the new branch c and also we have immediately switch to that branch. So if we run git branch, so you can see currently we have three branches and currently we are on the branch C. Now to delete the branch C we have to use git branch dash D and then name of the branch which is branch C. So you can see we have successfully deleted the branch C. Hey what's up guys in this video we are gonna see how we can create one remote github account and inside the github account we are gonna create one remote repository and then the files we have locally in our computer like we have the file like b.txt and then we are gonna push all of these files into this remote repository so that everyone can view this file remotely and also can contribute and modify these files. So first of all let's just create one github account. So to create the github account first of all we have to go to the website github.com and here you have to click on sign up and then here you have to enter your email address and click on continue. So there is no rocket science you have to just follow along and you will be easily able to create your github account. So once you have created your github account let's now see how we can create one remote repository so that we can store all of our codes remotely. So to create one remote repository you have to click on this create new button and then click on new repository. First of all you have to provide one name for the remote repository. So we're gonna call it github tutorial. Here you can add some description about this repository which is optional so we can skip this for now. So here we can either make our repository as public so that everyone on the internet can view our repository or we can make it private also. Here also we can add one optional readme file. For now we're just gonna keep it simple and once you have done with all of that you can just click on create repository and we will able to create our first github repository. And here we have all the commands so these commands can be used to create a new repository on the command line. Or suppose we have some existing code base and we wanted to push that code. For that purpose we can use these commands. So we have successfully created this github repo. Let's now see how we can push our files 
on the GitHub repo. So let's now push all of the files in the master branch into the remote repository. So first of all we have to copy this link because this is the remote repository link. So we're gonna copy that and then we have to run this command git remote add origin and then the link of our repository. So we just copy that and we have to run this command right here. So this will add one new remote repository named origin with this specified URL. So this URL basically points to the remote repository hosted on the GitHub. And then we have to run this command git branch dash m main. So we're gonna copy that and we'll just run this here. So this command is basically going to rename the master branch to the main branch. If we run git branch, the master branch is renamed to the main branch. And the reason is to align with the naming convention of the GitHub. And after that we have to run this command. So let's just copy that and we're gonna run this here. So you can see we have successfully pushed two of our files into the remote repository. First of all we are using git push. So this is to push the local file into the remote and dash u. So this is a flag and that is used to set up the tracking between the local branch and the remote branch. So here you can see initially our repository was empty. Now if we refresh that. So you can see we have successfully pushed these two files from our local repo into this remote github repository. Now everybody on the internet can view those files and they can contribute to our code and which was the purpose of creating and hosting on the github. So let's now see how we can pull changes from our remote github repository into our local machine. So suppose we have made some changes in our remote repo and we want those changes to be reflected back in our local machine. So for that we can use this pull command. So the pull will basically fetch the latest changes from the remote repo into our local machine. Currently our remote repo have two files and also we have this local repo here also we have two files. So the remote and the local machine are in sync. So let's now make some changes in the remote repository. So we're gonna add one readme file. So here we're just gonna add some content demo repository. Welcome to the demo repository. And let's now commit the changes. And here we have to just add one commit message and click on commit changes. So our remote repository have this readme file. So to pull the changes from the remote repo, we have to use the command git pull. So you can see we have successfully pulled all the changes and here inside our local machine we also have this readme file. So we have successfully pulled those changes. Let's now see how we can push changes from the local machine onto the remote repo. So here we're just gonna make some changes to the readme file. So we have made some modifications. Let's now add to the staging area and then commit with the message. And now to push those changes onto the remote repo we have to use the command git push. So you can see we have successfully pushed the changes onto the remote repo. So let's now check that. So here we are inside the remote repo. Let's now refresh that. And you can see inside the readme file we have this content which was not there earlier. Hey what's up guys in this video we're gonna see how we can create one new branch on the github. And also we're gonna see how we can pull that branch locally in our local machine. So here we're inside the github repository. Currently we are on the main branch. If we click on that we can type the name of the branch that we wanted to create. So let's just create branch b. Create branch b from main branch. So click on that. So this is the branch b which is created from the main branch. And here it says this branch is up to date with the main branch. And from the drop down we can switch between multiple branches. Main is the default one and this is the new one that we have created. So here let's just create another new file. So we are just basically creating one new file inside the new branch b. So we are gonna name the file. We are gonna call it branch b file. And here we are just gonna put some dummy content. And now we are gonna just commit the changes. And here we have to just add the commit message and then click on commit changes. So you can see we have the new file branch b file created inside the branch b. So inside the local machine we have only one main branch. So let's now see how we can pull the remote branch the branch b that we have created. So first of all we are gonna type git pull. So the pull is basically used to up to date our local repo with the remote repo. 
and if we type git status so it will show the status so here it says we are currently on the main branch and everything is up to date with the origin main so let's now use the command git branch dash a so the dash a is used to see all the local and remote branches so you can see locally we have the main branch but remotely we have this branch b so let's now check out this branch b git checkout and then the name of the branch which is branch b so you can see we have switched to the new branch b and you can see inside our repo we have this branch b file so we have successfully pulled our branch and if we check so you can see we are currently on the branch b now we're gonna create one branch on the local machine and then we're gonna see how we can push that branch on the github repo so let's just switch to the main branch so git checkout main so we are currently on the main branch now let's create one new branch so we're gonna write git checkout dash b branch c so you can see now we have three branches and currently we are on the branch c which we have created locally in our machine and here inside the branch c we're just gonna create one file and simply gonna say branch c file and let's now add this and then commit that so locally in the branch c we have created this file and let's now see how we can push that branch on the remote repo so currently on the remote repo we have only two branches the branch b and the main branch so let's now push that branch c so we're gonna use the command git push origin branch c so with this command we have pushed our local branch onto the remote repo so here currently it is showing two branches so if we refresh that you can see we have main branch branch b and the branch c hey what's up guys in this video we're gonna see how we can deploy and host one website for free on the github so here in our local system we have this dummy website so we're gonna see how we can host that on the github so first of all you have to go to the github account and here we're gonna create one new repository and we're gonna call it monkey site and we have to make it public and also we can add readme file for now we're just gonna keep it simple and then create repository so we have created this repository let's now push those local files into this repository so we're gonna copy paste these commands so we have successfully pushed these local files into that remote repository so if we refresh that so here you can see we have those two files we have this index.html and the monkey.png so in our file system we must have one file called index and this will be the entry point now to host this site we have to go to settings and here under this code and automation we have to click on pages and now here we have to select deploy from branch and after that here we have to select the branch we wanted to deploy from because we have only one main branch so we're gonna select that and then click on save so now it will take one or two minutes and after that we're gonna see our website link right here so you can see now our website is live so here you can see we have the link for our website so we have to click on visit site and here you can see we have this hosted site and the cool thing about this is that if we make any changes to that it will be automatically deployed and we don't have to do anything about that so let's make some changes so we're gonna add a paragraph with some content and now comment that changes and let's now push that so our changes are pushed onto the github so we have to just wait for a minute and our new build will be deployed automatically so our new build is live now so we have to visit the site so you can see our website is updated with this new paragraph and we don't have to really do anything we just have to wait for a minute and everything is up to date hey what's up guys in this video we're gonna see how we can fork one repository on github so fork means creating a copy of a repository so suppose we have one repository a and this is someone else's repository so git does not allow us to add code to someone else's repository so in that case we can create one fork of that repository so forking basically means creating a copy of that repository now we have one copy of that repository in our on github profile now we can make changes to our fork we can add new files we can modify this repository and all of these modifications will not affect the original repository now there are two scenarios when we should create a fork first of all if we wanted to contribute to someone else's project or secondly 
we wanted to create our own project based on this previously built project. In both of these cases, we can create one fork of that repository. Now once we have done with all of that modifications, then we can always contribute back to that original repository with the pull request. So we can create one pull request to contribute to that original repository. Let's now see how we can fork one project. So here we are on the GitHub and here we have someone else's Amazon clone project. Suppose you wanted to create one project based on this project. Because we do not have access to that project, so we cannot make direct changes to that project. In that case, what we can do, we can create one fork. So here we have one fork button and you can see a lot of fork has been done from this repository. So we have to simply click on that. So here we can give one name to that project and here we can add some description. So we're gonna keep it as it is and click on create fork. And this will redirect to our own GitHub profile. So here inside our GitHub profile, we have this Amazon clone project and this has been forked from the other profile. Now because this is one copy of the original project, so here we can make changes, we can add features and this will not affect the original project. And after we have done all of the changes, then we can always contribute back to the original project by creating a pull request. Hey what's up guys, in this video we're gonna see how we can clone one GitHub repository into our local system. So suppose on GitHub we have one repository called monkey site. Now suppose we wanted to modify the project, we wanted to add new features. So for this we need to have one copy into our local machine. So we can create this copy with this git clone command. So here we are on the GitHub repository called monkey site. And let's now see how we can copy or clone that project into our local machine. So for this we have to click on this green button and here we have this URL of this repository. So we have to copy this. So here in the local machine you can see this folder is currently empty. So let's now clone in this folder. So we have to write the command git clone and then we have to paste that URL and press enter. And you can see now the project is copied into our local machine. And you can see we have this folder and the folder contains all the files of the project. So we can change the directory into that folder. So we are currently inside that folder. So if we run git status, we are currently on the main branch and the branch is up to date with the remote origin main. We can modify our project so we can remove this p tag. So after the modification, we have to stage all of the changes git add so all the changes are staged now we have to commit that git commit with the message p tag removed so we have made the changes and the changes are committed here it says that this branch is ahead by one commit we have to push those changes into our remote repository we can simply write git push and all of the changes will be pushed on to that remote repository. So here if we go inside that index.html, so now you can see the p tag has been removed. So this is the way we can clone any GitHub repository into our local machine and then we can modify the project and after the modification we can push those changes onto that remote repository. So hope you understand the concept. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.